Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins. Hope everyone's doing well today. Here with your daily free picks. Okay guys, so today's video brought to you by BetOpenly.com. If you guys haven't checked them out, you really need to check them out. I know a lot of you guys have messaged me saying you've opened BetOpenly accounts. Um, awesome. Awesome. I mean, really, really cool, guys. They're the world's first peer-to-peer -peer sports betting site, um, and they're 100% the future of sports betting. So definitely check them out. Yesterday, guys, um, good and bad. All right. So yesterday, uh, we ended up with a winning day. We finished one and one, but we hit our two-unit play. Um, again, guys, in that two-unit play, I said yesterday, uh, every every time I bring up like the word trap line, people are like, oh, no such thing as trap line. Bullshit. All right. What, what was yesterday? Okay. What was it? The public all day long. I even posted on Instagram the numbers. The public all day long. All day long betting the under in that game. Clayton Kershaw under. Clayton Kershaw nine. If that's not a trap line, what is? The line is at nine with Kershaw pitching. No way. And all day long, the public betting and they don't, they don't move it, right? They don't move it. They let it sit there. We were on the right side of that, guys. I told you yesterday that was a trap line. That's why it was a two unit play. There's no way that line should have been there, okay? Honestly, if Vegas puts that line at eight, I don't even know if I bet the over in that game. But I mean, when they put it at nine, it was like so appealing. It's so appealing. I mean, it's like Vegas saying, please, please, Kershaw is pitching. Please bet the under. We didn't. We bet the over. Anyways, um, basketball game. So we had a winning day yesterday, but yet, you know, tossed and turned a little bit in my sleep because I was pissed off at the, at the officiating in the NBA. Um, I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop watching NBA, I think, when I bet on it. Um, but I think I, I wanted to watch it yesterday because I love the Raptors. And um, I just I just grow so tired of watching the same thing every single year. And the NBA does nothing about it. They do nothing about the officiating. So yesterday, um, it, it, not only, it not only almost cost the Raptors the game. I mean, they ended up winning. But it almost cost us our bet. It did cost us our bet, actually. I mean, not almost. It did cost us our bet because... Um, like 0.5 seconds left in the game. Um, the ball is lobbed up, inbound, lobbed up towards the basket. Raptor goes up in the air to grab the ball, hopefully an alley-oop or at least an attempt to lay up. And he's fouled. He's fouled while he's in the air, um, almost making contact with the ball. So um, they don't call a shooting foul. But I've seen this before. And I'm like, I know I've seen this before. So uh, I start the long journey of finding the actual rule. And I, I eventually did find it. So here's the rule, guys. If that Raptor, if the Raptor's fouled before the pass, it's just a regular foul. But when you lob a pass up for an alley-oop or, or like, uh, you know, a catch and layup kind of thing in the air, when you lob a pass like that, that is intent of shooting. So that actually, when the ball leaves his hand for that pass, any foul after that is a shooting foul. And again, it's the NBA. The refs just, they do whatever they feel like on any one given day. There, there is no, I mean, in the NHL, an offside is an offside, right? I mean, uh, a trip is a trip and there's a little bit of discretion to it. But um, in the NBA, they just do whatever the hell they want to do. So um, that play cost us money and it could have cost the Raptors the game. I know most of you don't care about the Raptors, but you certainly care about the money. So um, I said it before, guys. I mean, of all the sports, people always say, you know, sports are fixed, blah, blah, blah. They're, sports are not fixed, okay? They're, they're absolutely not fixed. But I, I have said this before, of all the sports, the NBA is the most corrupt. There's no question about that. And that's why you have to be very selective with the game. So I do bet NBA. You'll notice that NBA is very small piece. Um, and we do very well with NBA. So, I mean, you know, I guess we're complaining for the sake of complaining here. But um, it's just frustrating when we're on the end of a, you know, a nice screw job by the NBA. So anyways, um, one last thing I have to mention this. Okay. So if that wasn't bad enough, exact same play happens the other way in overtime. And that is called a shooting foul. But anyways, okay. That's, that's either here nor there. All right, guys. So, um, three plays for you guys. I already gave out the one play and unfortunately, well, fortunately for the people that got it, but unfortunately for people who were, uh, who didn't see the video, um, the line did fall. So I, I released an emergency pick at one o'clock in the morning. And the reason I said emergency pick is because every once in a while, Vegas just gets it wrong and they got it wrong. Okay. They posted a line, Cleveland, Cleveland, Kansas city at eight and a half. They posted eight and a half. Um, I'm saying this line's got to be seven, seven and a half. I mean, probably seven and a half, to be honest. And that's where it is now. That's where it should be. So we had under two units. We had Mike Esterbrook. Um, 
as the umpire in that game. He goes 50, 56.2 or 56.3% under. Um, a 12 mile an hour wind blowing straight in. We really liked that game. It was priced wrong. Um, but now what do we do? Okay, so some of you guys didn't get in on it. Um, if, it if it's at seven and a half now, guys, if it's at seven and a half, um, you know, I would, I'd go, you know, half a unit, three quarters of a unit. Um, if you really want to be adventurous, go up to a full unit, but do not go two units on this play. Okay. The value for two units was at eight and a half. Um, the value is gone now. Okay. I mean, if you got it at eight, I'm okay with that, but not at seven and a half guys. So it's just going to be, just make it a one unit play. But we, we, that's why I wanted to do this video last night. I knew this line was not going to be here. I said in the video, I knew the line was not going to be here today. So that's why I released at 1am and I'm, I'm sorry to you guys that didn't get it. I know people, if you're on the, on the West coast, you might've got it. Or, um, you know, if you have no life like me and you're awake at, you know, two o'clock in the morning, um, on a weekday, then you would have got it. Otherwise I apologize guys, but that's the only way I could really get that video out last night. So, um, I have two more plays for you guys. And the good news is that, uh, another two unit play. All right. So, um, Looking at baseball again last night, and uh, this is the third day in a row they've done this where they've delayed releasing the total um, at Wrigley Field. And it's only because of the weather. They can say whatever they want, but it's they're, they're delaying releasing because of the weather, and they're not sure where to open these lines. Um, I, I'll t you want to... Okay, so here's why, here's why they're delaying releasing it, okay? It's because of the weather. The weather is so good for unders right now that they're afraid to release these lines into the overnight in, in, in case they're going to get hammered, okay? They, they want everything open, all the bets, all the places accepting it, so they can get all this data, and if every shop's getting hit with the unders, they can quickly reduce the lines, smash it down to six and a half, um, or if they set it too low, then they can raise them, but whatever. I mean, Vegas is afraid of getting hurt on these totals, and uh, that's exactly what we want to do today. We want to hurt Vegas on these totals. So, Cincinnati, Chicago, guys. Cincinnati, Chicago, um, this is going to be a two-unit play. We have a 14-mile-an-hour wind blowing straight in, okay? We love that. But, I mean, talk about, like, Christmas in September here, guys. Who do we have behind home plate? Ron Culpa. Ron Culpa. Imagine, imagine a day where you have two under ballparks with wind blowing in straight in at both ballparks, and you have Mike Esterbrook and Ron Culpa behind home plate. How fantastic is that? So, Ron Culpa, for those of you guys who don't know, he only hits under about 57% of the time. 252 times his games go under, 189 times they go over. That's not bad, right? Um, these, these, are, these are two of the top threes, along with our buddy Vic Carapaz, the worst umpire in baseball. Um, these are two of the top three under umpires in the game. And they're both playing on the same day with the wind blowing in at under ballparks. Woo! Um, all right, guys, so we're going two units. But let me tell you how we're going to play this, okay? Tell you how we're going to play this. Um, we're going to split our units up a little bit here, okay? So this line's kind of like floating around in between right now. So we are going to play one unit to go under seven at plus 110. So one unit under seven at plus 110. And we're going to go one unit under seven and a half minus 125, all right? So we're going one unit under seven and a half minus 125 and one unit under seven plus 110, all right? So that's another two unit play. Uh, the two unit play from before, which I, I hope most of you guys got that in. I, again, I know not all of you did, but I hope most of you guys got in as a two unit play. And um, if not, guys, I mean, there, there's never uh, there's never shame in just you know skipping a play. It doesn't it doesn't hurt. I mean, there'll be more plays tomorrow and the day after. There's there's sports 364 days a year. Uh, on most years there is. Um, all right, guys. Last play for you guys, and then uh, you guys with the master class, I do have an additional four plays for you guys. But um, we have a little NFL football back, don't we? Oh, man, it, it's like I've been counting down the days for NFL football to come back. And now that it's like it's here and like most of my morning is like not even like really excited about football. I was excited about, you know, these nice situations in baseball. But I do have a nice play for you guys. And I'm going to give you a good system as well, okay? I'm going to give you guys a system as well. So, um, since 2005, Thursday favorites, okay? Thursday favorites have covered the spread 113 times, and they've lost 83 times, okay? So 113 wins, 83 losses. That means they cover the spread 57.7%, okay? Now, 
When those favorites are playing at home, that jumps up to 59.3%. And it's pretty hard to ignore that number, okay? I look at, immediately, obviously, we're gonna look at, at you know, Kansas City here. Kansas City, um, they were minus nine, they've gone to nine and a half now, actually like, as I was like getting ready to film this, I went to nine and a half at, uh, at the book. But um, either way, guys, we, we like them in nine, we like them in nine and a half. Nice money distribution. Um, again, you know, th this is a number it's hard to ignore, ignore when you have a statistic says hitting like, you know, 59%. So, um, first day we are going to go with Kansas city minus nine. Um, yes, I, I know like, you know, I've, I've had, you know, people mention a whole bunch of scenarios and things why they don't like Kansas city in this game. Um, but at the end of the day, guys, I mean, what what we're gonna do in the start of this NFL season is we're gonna we're gonna go under the assumption that this is football as normal, okay? And I know I know the world is anything but, but you can't start second guessing and making assumptions about your picks based on something that you really don't know, okay? So I mean I know I've had people say, well, you know, with with no preseason, like you know the the pass will be off, or with uh, you know with no preseason, um, you know the defense is going to be sluggish, or the offense is actually, well. I mean, again, we don't know that until we know that, right? And so, um, I mean, there's there's two options. Basically, we proceed based on what we do know, right? Or, you know, we lay off for a season, or we lay off for you know three or four weeks. But um, again, there, there's enough value and enough edge when you have systems hitting 59 uh, 57% that you know even even with a, a you know a slight difference here and there it's not enough to negate your edge so that's what we're going to do guys um Kansas City minus 9 uh Chicago Cincinnati one unit under 7 at plus 110 one unit under 7 and a half minus 125 and then uh, I gave out the play earlier Kansas City and Cleveland under 8 and a half that is it for today, guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. To hell with the NBA and their officials. And uh, as always, guys, have a very lucky day.